a uh, very good morning students we are in our regular class lecture the subject is field geology and the topic which i'll try to cover is the sampling and the book which i referred for this heading is the course in mining geology by arogya sami so the very first question in your mind is what is a sample so when you are in the field a little can be learned of the true nature of the rock in the field and hence there is a necessity of collection of portion of the rock on the field that has to be worked in the lab and such a portion of rock which is collected from the field is known as the sample and a sample is a term used for material collected to represent a rock type or a formation in a quantitative sense not only that the sample is being defined by its location as well as the composition so when you are discussing about the sample you should remember that a granite sample is intended to represent the whole body of the granite and that is also in chemical mechanical and physical properties and that sample can be employed in computation that is involved in the estimation of reserves and all such a thing right so what are the piece that you are collected from the field that should be holding that is that should be representing the whole rock mass in physical chemical as well mechanically so whatever the test you are doing in the lab uh, the result should be matching for the whole rock on the field also right so that is the minimum criteria for a sample and the next question is why should i sample right so what is the use of the sample actually the use of the sample is that to fix the boundaries that is when you are working in a area and you are coming across some rock types and if you want to find the length breadth and thickness of the rock type you have to sample that is to fix the boundary of the rock or the formation and the second thing is that to decide on the interval of sample so if the formation is horizontal there is no any problem and if the formation got disturbed and uh, there is there are so much of truncations of rock like this in such a case you may have to take a large number of samples if the rock formation is uh, say bedded and if it is horizontal a minimum number of samples is sufficient for the overall analysis but when the rock is totally disturbed and uh, there are so much of uh, disturbed structures like this then the number of samples should be very high to get a accurate answer so to detect to decide the interval of sampling we have to sample not only that to arrive the quantity of sample that is required for such a thing also you have to sample so these are the three uses of sample then there is a third question how should i sample so the following are the procedures that is involved in the sample the very first thing is that the sample location should be indicated with reference to a fixed point that is if you are going to take a sample from a known point say for example near your college you can simply mention it as near this college like that you have you can mention or if possible you can simply note down the latitude and longitude so that will be very useful for you when you are going for further analysis so whenever you are going to take a sample we have to mention the sample's location with reference to a fixed point and the next point is that if you are going to take a groove sample or a channel sample or a pit or a trench type of sample then what we will do is we have to keep the depth and the width of the channel groove or pit that this should be same that is uniform because if the pit size or the depth or uh, say width of the channel um, groups is uh, differing that is we are changing then the composition or the other things may change right so we have to keep in mind that the depth and width of the pit trench groove or channel whatever you are taking that should be uniform in size and the third thing is that the weathered rock cannot be used as a sample as we had mentioned earlier the channel should be uh, representing the rocks physical chemical and mechanical properties but when the rock is weathered the rock composition will be changed and the rock strength and physical properties will be changed so automatically the definition of sample will not be there that is it is out of uh, the limit so we cannot take the weathered sample weathered rock as a sample and if there is no other option that we are looking for a vein or a bedded portion 
which is exposed on the surface and you feel if it, it is weathered then the next option is that we have to clean the surface which you feel that is that may get weathered and after cleaning you can take that portion as a sample as there is no other options right and the next thing is that there is a fixed size for every sample the sample should be like uh, the size of say 4 by 5 by 1 in inch or 3 by 4 by 1 in inch so these are the two overall size variation in the sample and what are the sample that you are taking less than this size will not be considered as a sample as it may not maintain some of the properties and if you are taking uh, more than this size then that is actually a waste of time and your energy so the minimum uh, the actual range of size for the sample is this 4 by 5 by 1 or 3 by 4 by 1 and the packing is very important because when you are collecting lots of sample and you are taking all the samples in a single bag what happens the sample will uh, disturb that is bruise scratch with one another and uh, as a result the chemical composition as well as the physical properties may change or will tend to show a difference so that will not be a sample so once again to keep the sample as a sample you have to pack the sample if with paper or plastic bag or whatever it is which is available with you right and the next thing is that labeling because when you are uh, having lots of sample many times you will get confused which sample is from which place so to get rid of such a confusion the best option is that we can label the sample uh, with a name or a number or location whatever it is possible so you can just uh, make uh, uh, numbers in your field note according to the location and you can simply mark out the same number on the sample itself by labeling so you can use it in the further analysis and not only that if you are going for the petro fabric analysis then the orientation of the sample is also to be marked so that you can do the petro fabric analysis the petro fabric analysis that the rocks orientation if you are going to do in the lab then the orient uh, that is the strike dip or lineation or foliation whatever you are going to see the best thing is the foliation lineation if you are going to measure it in the lab or other things then you have to keep the record of the orientation of the sample and the next question is we know what is sample then why to sample then how to sample and what are the methods that is involving in sample actually there are a few methods that is involved in sample and the method which we are going to use is dependent on two things the first one is the nature of the mineral deposit so how the mineral deposit is whether it is scattered or it is uh, like uh, intrusion or it is a bedded form like that so according to the nature of the mineral deposit the method will change and not only that according to the purpose that is if you are going for the reconnaissance work a random sample is sufficient and if you are going for the detailed work a detailed sampling is required like that so according to the nature of the mineral deposit <coughs> as well as the purpose of the sampling the method of sample is decided the following or the few of the types of uh, that is methods of sampling the first one will be the grab sample then followed by channel sample then bulk sample then the borehole sample let us see with the first one that is the grab sample this is the collection of pieces of uh, ore randomly from various parts of the deposit uh, that is called as the grab sample that is when you are going to look for whether to whether there is a presence of an economic mineral or not in an area and this will be the best method of sampling this is generally used in the reconnaissance work and such a random collection of sample from the field is called as the grab sample and this method can be applied to the residual as well as the nodular deposit because according to the value ground slope the residual deposit as well as the nodular deposit is taking place right so you can take random samples like grab sample for such a type of deposits when this method is applied on a mine car this sample is called as a car sample because when the mining is uh, mining work is going on the people who are working in the mine may not and that is the laborers they may not be knowing about the uh, rock and the composition or such a thing right so they may sometime what happens they will sometime break the country rock so to keep a check on them that is whether they are breaking the ore body or the country rock then there is there is a there will be a geologist who is going to take the samples from the mine car and such a sampling from the mine car is called as the car sampling and this image shows an, uh, uh, say a figure of a mine car 
and the next thing is the channel sample and this is best for the bed and banded and weight type of mineral deposits because you can trace a single bed continuously when you are uh, taking sample on a river valley so you can find out whether there is a variation in the color or grain size or the composition of the rock formation which you are going to trace so the channel sampling is best suitable for the limestone deposit and all the same right and the next one is the bulk sample when you are going to take a rock sample if the rock is consisting of both the hard mineral as well as the soft mineral when you are breaking it for the sample what happens the soft mineral may break at the first and the hard rock hard portion may stay as it is and as a result what will be the the, the resultant sample may not be actually sample because it will not retain the chemical physical and biological uh, that is the mechanical properties of the actual rock because it is only consisting of the soft rock as the hard rock cannot be broken out in such a case what we will do we will take a pit or trench and we will take a large amount of sample now that is called as the bulk sample and this will be useful for the um, barrett deposits right and the next one is the borehole sample that is during the exploration of mineral and oil the drilling is used in which the location is drilled to measure the depth of the extent of the ore body that is used for the calculation and in such a case what we will do is we can collect sample from this method which represents the rock type layer below and that sample can be of two types the first one is the core sample so this image shows the core sample where the rock is completely uh, driven out from the surface without any disturbance on the on this thing and uh, that is called a core sample and sometimes what happen they will be using a tricone bit which will completely break the rock and bring out as a mud with the mud and such a sample is called as the sludge or muck sample where the rock pieces will be taken a uh, small portion of the rock pieces will be taken as the uh, muck sample or the sludge sample and there are some other methods in the sampling the first one is that uh, chip sample when you are breaking a rock for the sampling there may be small pieces that will be broken out and you can also collect such a small pieces or chips for the making of thin section and such a collection of sample is called as the chip sample and uh, when there is a very high variation in the composition of the rock then what we can do is the best method of sampling is that you can divide the area into different grids and we have to take samples from the all the grid and such a collection of sample from all the grids of the area is called as the grid sample and these are the few types of uh, sampling if you still have any doubt you can just ask me in the class thank you